Welcome back friends to another property update video where we will be running through the most important topics that you guys need to know. Now although I'll be running through new information on this video, I definitely highly urge you all to check out this video that I made a few weeks ago as there are a lot of points mentioned within that that are still relevant and just as important today for anyone thinking about investing, buying or even selling property in the UK. Now firstly, I'm going to kick it off with something that may actually excite some of you looking to buy a house. You may feel that the market today has simply not given you a chance due to its rising prices, not even remotely keeping up with the average wages. An article here by This Is Money has analysis predicting a price drop by the end of 2023. A 4.8% drop to be exact, which let's face it, given its year on year rise may not seem like the greatest thing for prospective buyers but it's still a drop. They also found that the 20% house price drop like in 2008, although off the top of my head, I thought it was around 15, 15.5% is gonna be less likely this time around. And that inflation continue to rise and the potential of mortgage rates doubling will cause this dip as per their prediction to happen. Now, as we know, the Bank of England is trying to tackle inflation and they're doing this by steadily increasing the base rate. So what exactly does that mean? Well, a higher base rate makes it more expensive for banks to essentially borrow money and therefore banks will simply pass this additional cost onto their customers, i.e. people like you and me. And alongside this, customers may also find it more difficult to pass affordability tests for mortgages and either have to buy cheaper properties or save even more of a deposit which let's face it, in today's current market, given everything that's going on, seems virtually impossible, at least for many of us out there. Moving on, the housing market is at its peak. Well, I've actually been saying that for a while and it just continues to keep rising. However, this was an interesting article which poses some questions and statements definitely worth pondering. And the one thing about this article that many of you may not recognize is that if we were to see rate rises to 3.6 in 2023, from the 1.8 in March just gone, that historically is actually a fairly low increase. But that doesn't mean it won't shock many of us as we soon adapt to the current situation. So when we see rates rising all of a sudden, along with a pandemic and the wars and everything, it can seem quite daunting. And then one other point I wanted to touch on from this article, which I have to somewhat agree with, unless new measures are introduced, of course, is that a drop in house prices, unless significant enough, would still not make life that much easier for first time buyers. You see, Mr. Robinson said historically the number of major consistent house price falls are few and far between and they are normally associated with a big economic downturn but there are no guarantees that this scenario plays out into the hands of first-time buyers people can find that their jobs are at risk or that their wages don't even increase at all and younger buyers are often the group hit hardest by recessions and with this rising mortgage costs also mean it will be more expensive to buy a house even though it's slightly cheaper so that's something to definitely have in the back of your mind now, some mortgage lenders have already started raising interest rates due to the Bank of England actions last week. Lenders are repricing their product ranges now almost on a weekly basis. So this is something definitely worth noting as the days of cheap borrowing are now becoming slightly more expensive. So if you have a refinance coming up, I definitely get your ducks in order and try not to delay that any further and get speaking to a mortgage broker ASAP. Now, an analysis by Hamptons estate agent shows that the first time buyer purchasing a typical 229,000 home with a 10% deposit saw monthly mortgage payments jump from £877 to £902 when the bank rate was raised to 0.75. However, as of last Thursday's increase, this will push the cost to £928. This means that a first time buyer purchasing now will pay an extra £612 per year than if they had brought at the beginning of March. And therefore, due to the rise of mortgage payments, first time buyers will eventually have to pay more, even if the house prices for as our experts predict. Moving on, for a while now you've seen me talk about demand and supply and the stamp duty holidays and the race for space all pushing up house prices over the past few years. But Hillary Osborne reports that rising mortgage rates and living costs going up are now potentially going to tip the balance. Now rather than make you read the whole article, she does state that, that she does not expect there to be a significant huge crash, but she remains negative about the prospects of the housing market more than she ever has since the start of the pandemic. And a comment worth mentioning to all of you is commentators now say that there's no reason to suspect that there will be a flurry of homeowners forced to sell anytime soon. While like in the early 1990s, we saw repossessions and distressed sales, the banking crisis did not result in a massive sell-off of homes. Instead, the falling interest rate rises allowed people to keep paying their mortgages and banks were encouraged to offer forbearance. Coding then said that the mortgage repayment holidays brought in during the pandemic suggested 
lenders would react in a similar way should we see a future downturn. Interesting times ahead my friends. Next up, Mark Sweeney reports in The Guardian that April marked the longest run of monthly increases since 2016 as the cost of homes reached a record £286,079. Now sharing the sentiments of some of the points I made on my last video update and what some reporters have mentioned in the articles I've mentioned earlier today, rising living costs, interest rates and the continuing rise of house prices will simply make it far more difficult for people to get on that property ladder. And finally, my friends, I'm just going to leave some statistics running along the side here that me as a bit of a nerd like to read over and maybe you guys would find interesting too. And this is all in regards to what the Bank of England base rate actually means and how it affects us. So hopefully it gives you a different perspective or a real life one at that. And with that, my friends, while you continue to read that, hopefully you've smashed up that like button. If you're new, maybe consider subscribing. And I just want to take this moment to thank you when you guys couldn't be doing anything but you chose to spend a few moments with me and that makes you pretty awesome. So until next time, my friends, thanks for watching.